Jennifer Seeger and welcome back to my channel, The Seeger Stories. So today is a very exciting day. It is day one of our Disney cruise, yay! So if you've been following my channel, you know that my husband Nate and I are on a land and sea trip at Walt Disney World. We've just finished up with five days in the park and today we are checking out of our resort, Caribbean Beach Resort, to take Disney transportation to Port Canaveral and board our Disney cruise. So we are very, very excited. We did get a notice when we got to our hotel last night that they would start baggage collection at seven o'clock this morning and promptly at seven there was a knock on our door. So we had just finished putting the last things in our suitcases and had ourselves pulled together. And now we just have some time to kill. The Disney transportation goes around to all the different resorts and our stop is at 845. We have a letter saying to join I don't know, somebody from Disney Cruise Line in the lobby no later than 30 minutes before, before our departure time. So that means at 8.15, we need to be over to Old Port Royal, which is the lobby area of our resort. And it's not super close, so that's about a 10 to 15 minute walk for us. Probably a 10 minute walk um, over there. We have a little shortcut that we can take, but this resort is huge. So gonna take a minute to go over there but we do actually have a little bit of time to kill we're really excited we're not quite sure what to expect of today the Disney transportation we were told that that has started earlier uh, when I called and spoke to a cast member about a couple different things for Disney Cruise Line they said the pickups are earlier just to account for the different testing we will need to take a COVID test before we get on the ship we were trying to read a little bit about that online it sounds like if you're driving to Port Canaveral you just stay in your car they will come over with the kit and watch you do a self swab to test and then the results take 45 to 60 minutes i don't know what that means because we are not arriving by car if there will be just a separate waiting area for those that take disney transportation but we'll probably still have the same wait of 45 to 60 minutes before the test results are in and we have the all clear to board the ship we did get a questionnaire that we filled out this morning it was just four or five basic questions relating to our exposure to covid and that may be depending on our answers it said reviewed with a health professional when we get to the port but you know no was you know to all of ours we haven't cared for anybody we don't have symptoms we're feeling good all of that so i don't think that we'll have to go through a review but if you answered yes to some questions maybe then you would need to go through a review just not sure so anyway super excited to be going today super excited to have you here and going along with us if you would be so kind as to click that thumbs up button below to like this video and subscribe to the channel we've got some really fun things coming three days on a disney cruise i'm so excited let's go so we are over at old port royale just got some coffee and they got some water we are waiting to board the bus to go on our Disney cruise and we just met with Jessica in the lobby I'm not sure what her title is but cruise coordinator and she's here to make sure that we have everything completed and get on the bus we had our questionnaire done and she took a look at our documents to make sure that they would pass the muster but we need to show them again as we're getting on the ship Nate has his passport but my passport was still in my maiden name so I'm actually bringing my real ID that I just got renewed so thankfully that came in time and then I'm pairing that with my birth certificate and then I'm also bringing my marriage certificate as a bridging document because of course my birth certificate is in my maiden name so all of that she said was sufficient to board the ship just thought I'd mention that in case anybody else was kind of wondering what to do if your passport like me is not in your your uh, married name she also told us and this is super exciting that we are going to be spoiled because the Disney dream is at 30% capacity for this cruise so we are not going to be dealing with crowds or lines or anything like that and um, in her words we're gonna be spoiled for future cruises because the ship's gonna feel almost empty I mean we were thinking like maybe capacity would be something like 70% maybe 50% but 30% is kind of amazing so 
it made me even more excited. Um, not that I know that they handle the crowds and manage everything well and it wouldn't make it a bad cruise if there were more people, but just given all the concerns with COVID and everything, it comes with a little more peace of mind and it'll just be nice not to have to deal with crowds and really truly be relaxing. So our, I almost said our ship departs, but our bus leaves for the ship in probably about 20 minutes. We're just sitting here outside enjoying a beverage and sitting right by the doors to the lobby, which are kicking out that lovely banana smell that Caribbean Beach Resort has. So really content to hang out here and wait and get on our, on our, I keep saying on our ship, wait and get on our bus. Yay! Cheers! Hiya, pal. It's me, Mickey Mouse. And I was just... Yay! Mickey! Oh! <laughs> Hiya, Minnie. How you doing? Oh, Mickey, have you heard? Have you heard? Heard what? Our friend is coming for a visit. Oh, isn't it exciting? It sure is. In fact, I'm talking to him right now. You are? Well, you have to tell him hello from me, okay? You got it. All right, pal. Minnie wanted me to say hello, and as I was really excited that you're coming to see us, tell him that too. As I was really excited that you were coming to see us, and oh, and that we can hardly wait until they get here. Uh huh. We can hardly wait until they get here. And wait, anything else, Minnie? Um, no, that's it. Well then, pal, it sure was great coming. Wait, wait. No, uh, uh, so I think that was it. Sorry. Aw, that's all right, Minnie. <laughs> like I was saying, it sure was great talking to you. And we'll see ya real soon. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> real soon. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Oh, and remember we love you. So hopefully the sound gets <laughs> up here. I obviously have to have my mask on. We are just in one of the tents waiting for the results of our COVID screen. So before you set sail on a Disney cruise, you need to register on the Safe Passage website, which Nate and I each did individually. And we had to upload there our vaccination cards and they give you a document with a QR code on it that you need in order to go through the screening process when you get here. So we showed the document with the QR code that was scanned and we went into this tent that they have set up off the parking garage across the street from where the port is that we will be boarding the ship. And it's this huge room. There are different little screening areas and each party goes in. The people that assist you are not permitted to touch anything in the bag. They give you this biohazard bag with just a little tube with saline and a pen and a document. So you write your name down. I shouldn't say document, a little sticker. You write your name and date of birth on the sticker. They scan that and link it to your Safe Passage account. And then you need to yourself do a nasal swab. You don't have to go very far up, but you have to swab five seconds in each nostril until the edge of the swab is saturated. And then you break off the tip in the tube of saline that you put your sticker on, put it back in the biohazard bag, and then they take it off for testing. The testing can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. So we are sent to a tent um, with our party as the larger tent has a little TV playing cartoons. And we are just waiting for an email to come in from Safe Passage telling us the results of our COVID test. And once we have that and it is clear, we are okay to go and board the ship. So just a rundown if you are sailing in the near future of that's how things are working right now with COVID. There aren't too terribly many people here, so hopefully it will not take that long. Like I said, we were told our ship's at like 30% capacity, so um, not too, too many people. And hopefully we won't have a very long wait and we'll be on the ship soon. Yay! So in addition to playing some cute little cartoons, it looks like this TV is going to have our ID, which is our reservation number. It's kind of hard to show up here. So on the left is the ID, and then it will say proceed to, and it'll either say terminal or consult area, which is maybe if you have an inconclusive or a positive test, it would be my guess. But we'll wait for our reservation to come up there and proceed to. We can also check our email to see um, when we get the test results through Safe Passage. So we waited only about 30 minutes and we just got the email that we are clear to sail. So here we go on the Disney Dream. Yay!
So it looks like we are doing a very abridged version of the sail away party. Each of the families is being brought in individually and given a little area to stand on. We were escorted first over to this gold circle and we are going to do a little party before a crew member will come and dismiss us and we won't be doing a sail away party. We are on the ship. We just sat down to lunch at Cabana's and it is a little different because they are serving you. So it's still buffet style, but there's shields up and then they are serving the food for you. So um, different stations, there's a hot station and a cold salad station. I got some potato leek soup. This is an orzo pesto. I just got some mac and cheese, some lamb. They gave me a roll some asparagus and then feta stuffed zucchini. And that's from the hot station. And then I have two plates. I also went to the cold station. Got some hummus, caprese salad. The gentleman was kind enough to pick out the green olives from the black and calmada for me, which was super sweet. And then I got some bokasha here, a crab claw, and then just a little bit of shrimp. I might have said shrimp already. And then they have a whole beverage station. Um, I just got some water. Again, you can't serve your own. They have somebody at the station to serve you whatever you want. And then they brought the silverware to the table after we sat down and they were really just spot on. So Nate came back and he just got a garden salad it looks like, mac and cheese, some french fries, some meatloaf, steak and bread. So, um, and also it looks like some potato leek soup. So we're gonna dig in. This looks delicious. So in addition to the hot and cold food bars, there is a full dessert bar. I got a pecan date cupcake and then a raspberry cream something dessert. And Nate got a carrot cake and he's still working on, they brought out fingerling potatoes after we had gone through the first time to the hot bar. So, so far, I'd say the food is pretty good. Okay, we just finished dinner at Cabana's. We're in Vanellope's Sweet Treats. This is so cute. <laughs> you happen to have a quarter on you. I'm kind of stuck in here. <laughs> We have a little race car. It's King Candy. And there's Vanellope. This is super cute. You can get this little, you can get a sundae that comes in this race car. If I hadn't just eaten like two desserts, that would be good. And then they have all of these candy flavors. How fun is this? Okay, so that's gelato and this is ice cream. Oh my gosh. And we have vegan flavor. Okay. Wow. Look at that raspberry sorbet. Doesn't that look good? It's like beets. It does look like beets. And then you can get all this topping put on. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, Here's that race car again. The little chocolates. It's so cute. And you can take the little race car home. It's a marshmallow wand. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh, and even Halloween themed. I forget we're on a Halloween cruise. Oh my gosh, there's just, it never ends. Hi, have you seen any questions? It never ends. So right up the pool area, they have the beverage center, but it looks like everywhere. Hi there. You can't do self-serve. They will gladly serve it for you. Here's the pool deck area. And over here, they have the funnel vision. So they have a huge screen playing Disney trivia, it looks like now, but they'll do movies up there. There's Donald Duck's pool over there. And then here's Mickey's pool, complete with this adorable slide. I love that. This is just for the little kids, but up there they'll have the entrance for the aqueduct that goes uh, all around the ship. There's somebody on it right there. We don't have our suits, so we're not gonna try that today. We'll try that maybe tomorrow. And then this I'm really looking forward to as soon as I get my suit. We've been wanting a hot tub for sore legs from the Disney park. Oh. Nate's saying the hot tub's only open until six. And Donald's got some rules, man. But we'll definitely have to do that. Look at that cool view. The pool. And there is the aqueduct. It's actually an aqua roller coaster, so not just a water slide. It's got the, the zips and everything. I don't know what you call that, like the little swoop in your stomach, I call it. Looking out at Port Canaveral. Wow. So we just walked down to see some of the gift shops. It looks like there's a lot of cute cruise line merch in here, but none of the shops are open yet. So we'll have to see if they open up once we set sail. Okay, we just found the info, Renee just found it. Everything opens at six o'clock. So unfortunately, because we can't get into our room and, and we can't uh, go swimming because we didn't set aside our stuff, we are kind of without anything to do until we can do that stuff. All right, so our rooms are ready and it looks like at least some of our luggage has been delivered. Our key to the world cards. Right, here's our room. Here's our home for the next couple days. I'll give you just a quick, quick, quick tour of 7570. We've got a little couch area here. Little couch area. And then here's our veranda. Ooh, oh, how do look I get at this? You see that? Oh. Oh, that's so cute. Welcome, Seeger family. Got a nice little dresser. There's a lot of storage, actually. Quite a bit of storage in these cabinets. And then we've got a hair dryer. I have no idea. Oh, they've got a, a heat mat for your styling tools. That's kind of cool. And tips for traveling with batteries. Uh -huh. A few nice sized drawers. This is a really cool detail. Got a special outlet for the hair dryer. We've got a little mini fridge down there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's neat. Nate displays it. I like this little chair. 
area. That'll be nice for a little vanity. Got a little, little tiny coffee table going on. Then this is our veranda. I didn't figure out how to open it up either. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we're heading out to our veranda. Nate's moving the stuff out of the way. We've got a couple nice little chairs, little table. Be nice to have some coffee and things. Wow. This is a cooler view than what we saw from lunch. I mean, not that that wasn't cool, but wow. Look at this, the porch. You can see everybody getting onto the ship. Wow. People are still boarding and Mickey and Minnie have been dancing for hours. So that is really cool. We'll go back in here. Honey, do you want to close the door behind me? So this is a nice feature too, the beds, because they specifically announced this um, on one of our talks today, that the beds were tall enough so you can unpack your suitcases below. And one of our suitcases already came up. We are just waiting on Nate's. Oh, look at this cute little detail on these lampshades. It's a little map. And then they've got little Mickeys. That's so cute. Got a little phone here. I know that the staterooms used to come with wave phones and I'm not seeing them. Oh, Interesting. Two bathrooms? Hell yeah. <laughs> Nate just goes, two bathrooms? Hell yeah. We've got a couple little bar glasses here. And then there's some more shelving, which is really nice. And then we've got three more drawers, so that's kind of six drawers. Over here, we've got our life preservers. Nice closet area with some good shelving. That's pretty cool. Is there, oh, there's two closets. This closet has a safe, it looks like, and more life preservers. And then I'll show you the bathroom in a minute. I'm gonna kick Nate out of it. Thanks, honey. <laughs> so this is just, where's the light? I don't know where the light switch is. Oh, the light's outside the door. Oh, we have to put our, ah, uh, duh. We have to put our key to the world card in for the light to come on. But here is the first, just kind of the toilet room, sink, trash, kind of your basic things. Ooh, I'm excited to. H2O sea salt and soap. Excited for that. Excited that they have liquid soap in the bathrooms instead of bar soap. We needn't have we needn't have brought our own. And then this is the second room. This is interesting that I saw a little sign that says watch your step. There's a little lip um, that you need to walk on to get up here. Kind of a nice little tub. It's kind of a deep tub, but it's short. And then just another sink, kind of a Getting ready. Oh, and they have, this is super cute. They've got the liquid soap again, and then they've got a little makeup towel in here. That's adorable, and a little bar soap. It's interesting though. Oh, this is lotion, I think, not hand soap. So hand soap in one bathroom, lotion. In the other, okay, and then they do have the same brand, the shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. So, this is so cute. We just took a few minutes and got all settled into our stateroom. We are waiting right now for the safety announcement. They're pausing all cruise activities so we can hear that. I know in the past there was kind of an assembly where everybody was required to go to the station and as a group you would hear the safety drill. Because of COVID and social distancing, they had everybody in their own time from boarding the ship until now, go to the station that we would all meet at in the event of an emergency or the station where the drill would normally be held and scan a, just a picture of the area so that they know we knew where we were going. And then once we had the scan, they assigned us a video to watch in the app. Now, 
we got through about 75% of the video. It said, once you start watching, don't move from your spot. So we were actually before sitting in cabanas, waiting and waiting, but it was buffering forever. Um, we got through as much of the cruise video as we could, and then it kicked us out of the app when I accidentally <laughs> clicked another button, um, and I couldn't get back into it, but then it disappeared. So I think the ship has counted us as having watched that, but in addition to the video, there's still a mandatory safety announcement. We're in our, we're just going to stay in our stateroom. They've been announcing periodically that all cruise activities are going to be suspended while they do the announcement. So we're not quite sure what to expect if it'll just be over the speaker or if something will show up on the TV or maybe both. We're, I guess it's it's all kind of new because we're cruising. This is our first cruise in general, but we're all cruising in a in a COVID world. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but we're gonna listen to the announcement and we have our Beauty and the Beast Theater at 5.45 tonight. We actually had the choice to go to the Mousquerade party, that's the costume party on the ship, or Beauty and the Beast. And then whichever we don't do tonight, we do on Sunday. Both of them showed up on our Navigator app. And and so I actually chatted with guest services through the app to see if, you know, we were indeed supposed to pick one or the other. And they said, yes, we're not assigned one or the other. We just, it was an early morning. So we both felt like we didn't feel like going to the party, just sitting in a dark theater before we have our meal at Animator's Palette tonight was what we wanted to do. And the other thing I was going to mention about guest services, I mentioned I chatted with them through the app. There's actually signs up you cannot stand in line to meet with guest services. They are meeting with people by appointment only. So you need to make an appointment through the Navigator app and then come back at that scheduled time or you can use the chat feature in the Navigator app. And they got back to us pretty quickly, I would say, within five minutes. So those are things that I know are a little bit different than times past. I think we will make an appointment for sometime tomorrow because I have some questions. We are signed up to have our luggage picked up the night before we disembark. And there was some confusion when I spoke to Disney cast members. I spoke to one who said, yep, they would pick up the bags and take them to the airport for us. And then that call got disconnected and I called in again. And then the other cast member that I got to speak with said that that service is suspended right now and they would only pick up our bags the night before and bring them to the entrance of the ship where we would need to take possession of them again. So obviously that's a big difference as to whether I or not I want to relinquish my bags the night before we disembark and I won't have all my things to get ready in the morning so we probably will make an appointment with guest services or just open up the chat app again to get answers to those questions. Pay close attention to the information provided. At this time we ask that all crew members working in guest areas suspend services and stay in place until the end of the safety briefing. Take you in small groups from the assembly station to the lifeboat and special care will be taken. Okay, so that was the safety announcement. They played it on the TV as well as the speaker. It was the same video that I watched most of on my phone, so I wish I wouldn't have even tried. Nate said I miss heard the gal when we scanned the code that said the video was optional to watch on the phone because you can watch it on a TV or hear the announcement and that suffices. So anyway, we are going to head up to the deck. Uh, there's no sail away party, but we will be sailing away. Not sure if we're going to try and enjoy the pool or just enjoy the sunshine and be outside to get going on our cruise on the Disney Dream. So excited. Hello from our balcony we are officially cruising we went up and just kind of relaxed in the hot tub for a while and i didn't think i'd want to go in the hot tub because it was kind of warm out but it was in the shade and after so many days walking in the park i tell you it felt good to have a little bit of a soak and we actually set sail around five o'clock this evening so we weren't sure exactly when it was going to happen it was scheduled for 4 35 but we did read a note that due to covid and the enhanced safety protocols that it might be up until 7 30 before we actually left the port so we were <laughs> excited that it was five o'clock and we were able to be out on the deck and see everything as we set sail we went to the Beauty and the Beast live stage show. It was really, really good. I mean, top quality Broadway-esque entertainment on a cruise ship, so that was wonderful. 
Although during the show I did start to feel, well I should say, first when the when the ship took off I started to feel kind of like a rumbling in my chest. I thought, oh this isn't good. I kind of felt like off kilter. But then we got out there and I'm like, it's okay. We're sitting in the show and I was oblivious to the fact that we were on a cruise ship until almost towards the end and I'm like, oh I feel it a little bit. And not that I feel nauseous or anything, but I feel it more than I thought I would, if that makes sense. So this is Nate and my first cruise, and I wasn't sure so many people say, oh, you can't even tell. And I'll say for the most part that is true, but sometimes I can, and especially when we are standing up, like I looked like I could not walk in a straight line. People probably thought I was intoxicated or something <laughs> leaving the theater. I'm just having a little trouble getting my bearings. So I'm doing better when I'm sitting. We did shop around a little bit. There's a couple shops down by the theater that opened up. I'm sure we'll probably try to go tomorrow or in the next couple days uh, when they weren't so crowded and once we have a little bit of our equilibrium back. Uh, so now we just have about a half an hour before dinner and came back to our stateroom before going to Animator's Palette. So just wanted to check in on that and I will definitely show you guys dinner because did I mention that I'm really, really excited for Animator's Palette? animators palette I've seen photos we peruse the menu we're super hungry right now we have the late seating for dinner which is 8 15 is when we go to dinner and that's a long time since lunch or it's feeling like it so we're excited for a good meal okay we're just getting to animators palette and this is such a cute restaurant the theming is of course around animation so the paint brushes are the pillars holding up little I don't know it looks like a palette kind of light fixture and look at the chairs they even are themed Mickey Mouse the big thing about this restaurant are the TVs because Crush from Finding Nemo will come around and as long as you talk with him he'll interact with you they just brought us um, Nate's already digging in some focaccia bread and then this is a roast garlic dip but this is just the coolest restaurant look at my butter knife it's a little paintbrush so excited and then the menu again I didn't bring my phone so I'm looking on with Nate is just a QR code that you pull up uh, to get the full menu Toronto? that's spicy so our starters just got here. Nate had Serrano ham, and I have truffle pasta. How's your appetizer? I'm really excited. His is Serrano ham, and this one is black truffle ravioli. I'm really excited to try it. That is amazing. It's a little overshadowed by all the friends swimming around us, but it's really, really good. Okay, course two just arrived. Nate, what did you get? I got the cheddar and bacon soup. Cheddar and bacon. You can see we're doing really well in our bread basket. And then I got the butternut squash soup. That looks amazing. And at last, the entree. What'd you get, Nate? I got the beef tenderloin. That looks really good. Yeah. Is that the one that has wasabi mashed potatoes? Yes. Okay, but he, spe he said they're not spicy. Yeah. We'll figure out how that goes. And then I ended up getting, this was a side that came alongside the pork. It is a sun-dried tomato risotto. And I just wanted it for my meal. And our server was kind enough to oblige. So I'm already super full. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat this. I ate... Well, we ate a lot of bread. We're on round two of the bread. So, how is it? How are the mashed potatoes? Oh, but the steak's good? This is me trying Nate's wasabi mashed potatoes. That was, that is not for me. I do not, I don't think I like wasabi at all. That was not my dish. We're waiting for our dessert and our server just gave us a challenge that we have to get the QR code out of the goalposts, make the same goalposts formation, but we can only move two crayons. This is gonna take some things. So this is Nate's big idea. Is, yeah, that's not really, that's not really the puzzle. 
But that's all we can come up with to get it out of there. With only moving two crayons. I'm really interested to see the answer of this because we're stumped. I'm gonna move only two crayons. Okay. I move one. Aw, oh, man! Genius. Alright, so we got the lemon icebox pie. And Nate got some cheesecake with, oh, the cute little straw. I love it. We're gonna be very, very spoiled on this cruise. Oh, I even love this little detail. It's like a little white chocolate on the side. This is under their specialty dessert, so I'm super excited to try it. Oh my gosh. That's really good. It's like lemon meringue pie without the meringue. The food here has just so far been phenomenal and excellent. I can't say enough good things. This is, yeah, what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> dude, Jennifer, who are you here with today, dude? Nate. Oh, hello, dude, Nate. Dude, I totally watch the stock tonight, dudes. <laughs> oh, dude, excellent, dude. Well, dudes, where are you from, dudes? Minnesota. Oh, the Minnesota also, dude? Do you, do you know my friend Michael from the Minnesota also, dude? No. We just met him. Dude, Hi, Michael. Dude, give a wave, dude. <laughs> dude, I totally have to go back to the Minnesota with, dude. Well, dude, is there another way to <laughs> say hello to the Minnesota, dudes? Nope. Nope, dude. That's the only way, dude? Yep. <laughs> dude, pretty simple as it is, dude. Dude, that is where I just do. Well, you like Jennifer, is there another way you would say hello, dude? No. Hey. Hey there. Hi there, ho there. Oh, dude, I think I got that. Here we go, dude. Hey there. <laughs> We just met Stitch after dinner, coming back to our room. I'm in love with how our door turned out. It is so cute. <laughs> we just got back to our room. I don't know what this dude is. <laughs> He's wearing your sunglasses. Hi, buddy. You got a little chocolate or something in there? That is hilarious. Hello. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> we're just getting back to our creature. Um, it is not very late. It's like quarter to ten. We were hoping to catch villains trivia at like nine o'clock, but we didn't get done eating until just about nine thirty, and it was wrapping up. So we missed that, and there aren't any activities until fifth ten fifteen. But we had a wake up call at five a.m. this morning, so it is whew, really time to go to bed. Hold on, I have more things to say, but I think I need to sit down. Like, I'm not, I'm not sick, but I'm not used to the rocking, so hold please. Okay, I've moved to more unflattering lighting, but I'm stationary now, so I can talk a little easier. I wanted to address just observations today because when we booked this cruise, COVID wasn't a thing, we hadn't heard of it. And of course, when we were supposed to be sailing was in January and all the cruises were canceled and now they've come back and they're very different. And with the recent things that have been happening with COVID and the Delta variant and that spiking and all the cases out there, I mean, there was talk between Nate and I as to whether or not we should come on this trip, particularly the cruise leg of things because cruise ships are kind of infamous breeding grounds for troubles and we remember like a year and a half ago when all this started, just horror stories of quarantines on ships and blah, blah, blah. You were all there too. You remember how that all happened. I just want to say that I've been very, very impressed with the measures that Disney has taken. When we were in the parks, I won't say that there weren't precautions, but it was a distant thought. It didn't feel as prevalent as it does when we're on the ship. Like social distancing has kind of gone by the wayside in the Disney parks, but it is very, very apparent here. There are markers 
on the floor there are signs to keep the parties in the elevator you know to you know two individuals or one party I've even seen signs explaining how to wash your hands in the bathroom and in the same bathroom you know where you take the paper towel I've seen a sign telling you to take an extra paper towel to use it to open the door there are sanitizing stations about every three to five feet and you are sanitizing before you come in and out of any restaurants and then in the show tonight they had every other row blocked off for beauty and the beast and they had an usher actually come and seat you to make sure there were at least three seats in between you and another party and of course the row behind you and in front of you was always empty so i mean there's just a lot of social distancing happening and then even after the show they had you wait and they had somebody escort you out so I feel like they are taking it very seriously where things have started to feel lax in other areas of life in general. It, it feels like almost, you know, like COVID's brand new and these restrictions are just cropping up and I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm tired so it might not be making any sense but I just want to say that I feel like every precaution is being taken in addition to everybody on the ship tested negative for COVID today. So um, just wanted to put that out there if that helps you with your peace of mind if you were like me and trying to make that decision. And I couldn't find a lot of information out there of somebody that was on a cruise and what they experienced. So wanted to throw that in there. But like I said, we have had a very long week. We had a very, very early morning. We are full, beyond full and sleepy and it is time for a good night rest so I'm gonna sign off on this vlog day one of our cruise on the Disney dream thank you so much for watching if you did like the video please click that thumbs up button below and consider subscribing to the channel this is just day one we've got two more days of cruising ahead of us so hope you'll stick around and watch those again thank you for being here and I'll see you next time <laughs>